Hello and welcome to exploratory analysis of COVID-19 tweets using topic modeling, UMAP, and digraphs. In our paper, we used five different methods to answer five different research questions. First, what are the high-level trends that can be inferred from COVID-19 tweets? Second, are there any events that led to spikes in this COVID-19 Twitter activity? Number three, which topics are distinct from each other and are there different visualization methods we can use to understand that distinction? Number four, how does the speed of retweeting in COVID-19 compare to different disease outbreaks or emergencies? And fifth, how do COVID-19 networks behave as information spreads? Our primary contribution is applying uh, UMAP, uh, which is a form of dimensionality reduction on COVID-19 Twitter data, which uh, before that point, we hadn't found literature to use UMAP. And this helped us visualize some of the LDA topics and see which ones were distinct from each other. And then also use graph networks to visualize COVID-19 retweet cascades. And what we found from the retweeting analysis is that COVID-19 messages were 50 minutes faster than uh, another study from H7 and 9 in 2013 in China where um, it was a little bit slower. And so this might indicate that COVID-19 has really global nature, volume, and intensity on Twitter compared to different disease outbreaks. And then we also found that specific topics were triggered to uptick by live White House briefings. And it implies that COVID-19 Twitter users might be highly attuned to government broadcasts uh, during this time frame. Our data set uh, consisted of 23.8 million tweets between uh, the middle of March to early April, and we first performed be basic regular expressions on uh, 12 different track terms uh, that focused on a healthcare set. And we found that uh, tweets that dealt with masks uh, really trended higher than others. And that doesn't come as a surprise since that was a very topical uh, theme during this time frame. We used LDA modeling and we found that the topics were consistent with other studies on COVID-19 Twitter at the same time about healthcare, illness, and a lot of international dialogue where four out of our 20 topics were in different languages. We ran 15 different LDA models on a varying number of topics and we chose the one with the highest uh, coherent score, um, which was 20 different topics, which are provided here. Uh, some of the topics generated emerging words in the public conversation, like hydroxychloroquine. To better understand the trend of these topics over time, we plotted them temporally. Uh, these hash marks imply discontinued time. So our corpus uh, was not a continuous time set of March 24th to April the 9th. There were some breaks in it, and this is called broken axes style plots. We can see here in the gray hash mark that from March 24th to 28th, the topic 18 about POTUS uh, trended high, as well as approximately topic 13, and that this topic dominated by POTUS uh, didn't really shrink in popularity over our time frame. It remained to be um, a high topic of concern. We use change point detection, particularly a method called binary segmentation. Uh, to confirm that uh, POTUS topic tweets uh, increased in frequency uh, after live White House briefings. And you might. To better understand the different 20 topics, we used UMAP. Uh, UMAP is a dimensionality reduction algorithm, and it finds these low dimensional representations. Uh, with similar topological properties as the high dimensional space. And that's why I'm showing this visualization from the UMAP uh, documentation of uh, a 2D representation of data about a bird being projected into 3D space. And what UMAP does is it measures this local distance of points across a neighborhood graph. This is called a fuzzy topological representation and it uses nearest neighbors and stochastic gradient descent to optimize uh, that neighborhood graph to find the closest and most similar fuzzy topological structure. And what we did is we got the Twitter data, we transformed it into a 2D uh, sparse matrix, and we created an embedding of those vectors, and we fit it uh, with the Hellinger metric as our uh, distance metric. 
and it visualizes the clusters of these 20 distinct topics to give us a sense of whether these topics uh, are different mother topics in their conversations and the tweets. For example, uh, topic 100, uh, which is non-applicable, meaning that it was difficult to fit it against these other 20 topics, have unique tweets that are not similar to the other 20 topics, and that's why it's out kind of way out here in, in the right field by itself. There are some other clusters of topics here. Um, this might imply topic seven, eight, or a blend of them with nine. This bright red spot might also indicate topic nine distinctly about uh, masks. Another cluster of groups in topic um, potentially 10 uh, might also indicate um, distinct tweets as well. So this provides us just another way to understand how topics are distinct. We analyzed the retweeting times and we found that uh, COVID-19 tweets occurred in greater frequency and it slowed down much later when compared to a similar type of analysis for H7N9 in 2013 by Zhang et al, who analyzed this not on Twitter, but the Chinese uh, Sino Weibo platform. And uh, this provided us a, a sense that maybe the global intensity and the volume of COVID-19 tweets is much greater compared to other disease outbreaks. And that the time to retweet COVID-19 specific tweets was about 2.87 hours uh, faster than uh, the H7N9. But again, there are limitations here about comparing this one to one. We also visualize the retweet cascade graphs. These types of graphs um, show how social media network uh, propagates information. And we analyze nine different periods of time shown in table four. The graph to the left is what the COVID retweeting network looked like at 2.7 hours, which was the uh, median amount of time it took to retweet COVID-19 messages. The blue indicates the node, which is the account, and the red indicates the edges or connections between accounts. We visualize them based on different speeds of retweeting, and we selected these time points based on published benchmarks in the disaster literature. Uh, so for example, the G1 graph um, is the fastest network, and 19 seconds is taken from a study that shows earthquakes are retweeted uh, within uh, 19 seconds. We visualize these retweet cascades at different time points. Uh, so you can see on the right, A, G1 is the fastest at 19 seconds, and then I shows the network at um, 168 hours out, and it provides us and clues about what accounts were the most actively retweeted and paid attention to. And the density or the um, relative number of edges or connections increases over time from uh, G1 to G9. At A, very rapid retweeters start off with a very sparse network with few nodes in the center um, that are not retweeting messages that much. By the time we get to G at uh, 3.7 hours, the primary retweeter was a news network that you can see um, in the middle. 24 hours in H, there's a concentrated set of nodes or users being retweeted. And by the time we get uh, 160 hours out, there's one account that's being retweeted um, about 92 different times. Limitations of our data set are several. Um, you can view and read some of them here, uh, but uh, I think many of them point to uh, some compute limitations, our data set was discontinuous, um, and we couldn't identify a lot of papers that were similar in respect to ours. Here are some of our next steps, uh, spatial temporal modeling, dimensionality reduction, uh, getting continuous data and repeating these experiments, and then finding some more comparable studies. Thank you very much and feel free to reach out.